Hey everybody, welcome back. Well guys, in this video, we're going to be looking at the two Foothills Trail guidebooks that are available, and hopefully we're going to be able to determine which one is best for you. Alright, so we've got Foothills Trail guidebooks on the table today. We've got this guidebook here, which is Hiking South Carolina's Foothills Trail, written by Mr. Scott Lynch. And this guidebook, which is the official guidebook put out by the Foothills Trail Conservancy. Well, let me start out by saying that I am a member of the Foothills Trail Conservancy, and I'm the trail maintenance coordinator for that group. All right, but we're going to look at these guidebooks, and I want to promise you that I'm going to give you an honest and objective opinion on each one. It's going to be up to you ultimately to decide which guidebook you want to use, and I'm going to look at the pros and cons or my likes and dislikes about both of them, okay? It was, I want to keep it objective, and I made a list of five things that I liked and disliked about Mr. Lynch's book, and then same thing with the Foothills Trail Conservancy's official guidebook. Five things that I like about it and five things that I dislike about it, okay? But at the end of the video, I'm going to tell you which one is my choice and the reason why I feel you should pick the one that I'm going to pick, okay? We're going to start with this one first, the official guidebook that's put out by the Foothills Trail Conservancy. So let's see here. Things that I like about it is that, you know, this book has a long history. And you can see here behind me, I've got my display that we have up at our annual meeting and our spring picnics and stuff. This is the seventh edition of the Foothills Trail Guidebook. It started in 1983 with this little brown one, and it has been changed through the years and modified and improved to this version that you see here, our seventh edition. All right, things I like about it is spiral bound. I like that. It lay it out flat and, you know, lay it on your bench or you can fold it over backwards. It makes uh, using it a lot easier. All right, I also like that this guy book is up to date. Uh, usually one or two people or three people a committee will go through the guidebook and they'll make uh, the necessary changes, you know, when things have been altered to the trail, if there's been a reroute, if there's been campsites added, whatever. It, it's, you know, this is the most up-to-date version of what's going on on the trail that you can get. And I can tell you that in the last two or three years, there have been significant changes along the trail, improvements that you'll find um, in the very next version of this guidebook. It'll be in it. All right, something else that I love about the Foothills Trail Conservancy's guidebook is that it's very accurate. Hayward Douglas went out and hiked the entire trail four different times, twice with a measuring wheel taking notes, and two more times with, you know, a heavy-duty GPS, to, like a backpack version with an antenna. And I can tell you that the mileages in here are accurate. Something else I love about this guidebook is that it leaves all the planning to you. It's not going to have prepackaged hikes. You know, it's not going to do all the thinking for you. It's going to give you all the information you need. And if you read it thoroughly and you study it and you can plan a great hike and you could also have a, like a plan A and a plan B. Now, dislikes. What do I not like about this guidebook? Okay. Uh, this guidebook doesn't do as good a job uh, identifying water sources or your next water source as maybe Mr. Lynch's book does, okay? All right, my next dislike is, I don't want to say dumbed down, but it needs to be simplified a little bit, uh, make things a little more clear. Um, you have to do a lot of reading and really get in there and highlight, make notes uh, when you're planning your hike, and I wish that maybe we would simplify it a little bit more that this guy. Uh, campsites is something else I dislike about this, is it doesn't necessarily point out the campsites as well as this one does. You know, there's camping is allowed pretty much all along the trail. It's not allowed inside the state park boundaries and it's not allowed in the whitewater corridor, but pretty much everywhere else you can camp. But what we're trying to do is, is narrow that down and have like 20 designated sites that have some amenities there, you know, benches, fire rings, bear bag cable, all that kind of thing to, to limit some of the impact along the trail. All right, and hopefully in our next edition, the eighth edition of this guidebook, which will be coming out probably in two years, um, that we'll be able to have those campsites clearly listed and all of them named too and tell you how far it is to the next 
campsite, okay? Because you, know, you may get to your campsite and say, well, I wonder how far it is to the next one. And you'll know, you'll, it'll be in the next guidebook. So that's coming, like I said, probably in about two years. I mentioned my, my last thing on my um, dislike list is, you know, probably just the size of the book. It's, you know, I know it's a fine line between putting all the information in you need and, and yet it not being too big. And what I would do if I were going to go out, I needed to take this book with me on the trail. I would go through and remove the pages that I didn't need. There are some stuff in here like, you know, the reverse directions that's in the back of the book. If you don't need those, take them out. You can open up the spiral binding and take out the pages you want. You just open the back page. Let me turn it like this. Here's the front. There's the back. You just open up the back page. And here's the seam that's in the binding. And you just spread those out, you know, with a, you know, butter knife or whatever. You can just spread those things out and take out the pages that you don't want. And you can condense this book down a lot if you want to. So that would be my last uh, thing I dislike about it is this, it, the book's getting pretty big. So now let's move on to Mr. Lynch's book, okay? And let's talk about the likes and dislikes in it. All right, so my likes. All right, so one of the things that I really, really like about Mr. Lynch's book is that he does a good job identifying water sources and not only that particular source, but how many miles it is to the next dependable water source. In the hikes that he has in here where he talks about, you know, planning your hike or whatever, he mentions that you need to plan on getting a late start on the first day, and that's the gospel. If you're planning a hike, whether you plan it yourself or if you use Mr. Lynch's book and some of the hikes that he has in here, plan on getting a late start the first day. Right. And I like the fact that he does have some uh, day trips listed in here. He has some overnight trips listed in here, and I love those. That's uh, good advertising for the trail that, hey, you know, he's a great little overnight hikes. But I will say that when you get into more than one night out on the trail, I would recommend planning your own hike, okay? All right, something else I like about Mr. Lynch's book is his reverse directions. Uh, you could tell that he basically took his table rock to Oconee directions and just flipped them around and all the mileages, he just had to change those around a little bit and put all the descriptions are the same going either way. And I love that. All right, something else I do love about this is that you know, it's not very big. I mean, you can slide this in your back pocket as you're hiking. It's lightweight. All right, so let's talk about the things I dislike about Mr. Lynch's book, okay? All right, something about Mr. Lynch's book that I don't like is that I don't feel like it's very up-to-date. Looking inside his book here, he's got a 2015 copyright and a second printing on 2017, but I don't think it's been maybe updated since 2015, and there's a lot has happened on the trail since then. All right, so something else that I dislike about Mr. Lynch's book is the is the idea of planning the hikes for you, saying, hey, you know, if, you're, if it's a five-day hike, you can't peer. If it's a six-day hike, you can't peer, and that kind of stuff. I guess some people like that, but I think you're better off to plan your own hike, and you need to have a plan A and a plan B. Something else I dislike about his hikes that he has pre-planned for you is the last day of whatever hike it is, is a long day. You know, he, he was smart to say that you're going to get a late start, so he has a short first day, but then he's got you camping and a long day, the last day to get to the finish. All right? Something uh, else I don't like about it is there's really no history in it. And I know that's part of the process of keeping the book small. You leave all that out. In fact, on the, some of the reviews that I was reading on Amazon about Mr. Lynch's book, one of the good reviews was a uh, lady wrote that there wasn't no useless history in the book. <laughs> you know, that uh, he, she didn't care what who made what bridge, and, you know, she didn't need to know that stuff. And the last thing that I dislike about Mr. Lynch's guidebook is this. There are a lot of places in it, trail descriptions and, and locations and things that I feel like were copied directly from this guidebook, okay? And how I know that, that there was a mistake in this guy book in one of the mileages. And I'm not going to say where it is, but I went out with my wife and we found the spot and we confirmed it with the GPS that the mileage was inaccurate. And when I went and spoke to um, the guy in charge, he told me that the mileage was put in incorrectly on purpose. 
and he gave me the reason for why he did it, and, you know, I lived with that. And then, lo and behold, in Mr. Lynch's book, the same mistake is repeated. And that led me to believe that he used this book largely as a reference to create his book. Now, I don't have a problem with that other than should have put in the back of his book somewhere, put either a works cited page or a bibliography or something and say in there that, hey, I referenced this book when I made this one. You know, don't play it off that this is an original work when it's not. So which one's the best? And here's the reason that I choose this one. Okay, This is the book I want. This is the one I'm going to buy. This is the one I'm going to use. And here's the reason. This book, when you buy it, not one penny of the proceeds goes back into the trail that we love. All right? And there's nothing wrong with profit. There's nothing wrong with, you know, Mr. Lynch making, you know, money off of his book. That's what he made it for. But this guy book, when you buy it, a portion of the proceeds goes right back into the trail. All those bridges and benches and fire rings and tools and work and all the stuff that goes into the trail that keeps it what it is. This guy book is part of what pays for that. You know, when this book's made, of course, the conservancy has to pay so much to get it printed. And then even if you go to like REI and you buy this book, we get a portion of the proceeds. And REI, by the way, gives back to the Foothills Trail. I mean, in the form of grants, different projects that we're doing, REI, uh, every year that I've been involved has wrote a big check back to the Foothills Trail. All right? So this guy book right here, you're reinvesting back into the trail when you buy this one. You buy Mr. Lynch's guy book, not. Okay? So think about that. You know, if you love the trail, you love those bridges, and you love, you know, the benches that we're putting in and the fire rings that are being bought and put in and the bridges across the creeks and stuff, you're not getting your feet wet it's because of this guidebook right here and the revenue that it produces for the Foothills Trail Conservancy, along with these maps, okay? All this stuff that, that the Foothills Trail puts out is a large part of the budget that goes back into the trail. All right, well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video about which guidebook you want to use out on the trail. It's up to you. You use whichever one you want. They'll both get you there. They'll both get you back. And I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you come back for the next one.